It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Margot, for the lovely speech, and uh, hope you enjoy my French classes. Um, spectacles, that is. Uh, thank you really for this great and slightly terrifying honor of being in the same room with some of the greatest artists, musicians, scholars, sculptors, poets, historians, and writers, thinkers of this land. People often ask me, is it difficult being an Indian woman director in America? And at first I do not know how to answer this, but I say it's much easier than back when I was a man. But uh, <coughs> that stops them. <coughs> but uh, seriously, I am very relieved to be a woman and to be from India, where paradoxically I grew up seeing women on either side of Mahatma Gandhi fighting for freedom from the British in our country. The country was for years uh, led by a woman prime minister, the thought of which still gives the United States indigestion. Um, <laughs> My dynamic mother was an early inspiration. Uh, when I was eight years old, she called herself a professional beggar. She raised money for the first home for healthy children born to leper parents in my town. So I was brought up with the foolish confidence that anything is possible. I grew up in a small town in Orissa in India. In those days, it was considered the backwaters, the, ba the armpit of India. My two elder brothers had been sent to prestigious boarding schools, and I was expected to stay in the all-girls convent, taught by non-teachers, whom I called the ladies-in-waiting, each waiting for an arranged marriage that was bound to come. I carefully and patiently crafted my escape uh, and found an admission in, at the wonderful school at the foothills of the Himalayas, an Irish Catholic boarding school, from where Mother Teresa, in fact, came. It was called Tara Hall in Simla, and was terribly Irish, but also very British. If we said Tara Hall as opposed to Tara Hall, like Gone with the Wind, we would get smacked on our knuckles. But that was the place where I first fell in love with America. I was sick one day up in the mountains, being rushed to hospital in a horse-drawn carriage, and it was James Taylor, one of our honored medalists tonight. I'm so upset he isn't here, but I hope to give him a big hug tomorrow who comforted me night after night with his haunting voice and iconic lyrics of his classic song, Fire and Rain. It was the era of the Vietnam War, and it was the music of peace and protest that fueled me, the great conversation of race in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird that kept me going. We all thought we were scout in our little boarding school. It was the wild imagination of the group theater in New York, of Jean-Claude Van Italy and Joseph Chaikin that inspired me. It was the speeches of Malcolm X, the irreverent humor of Philip Roth's Goodbye Columbus that we read under the covers of our counterpanes. That was our Irish Catholic word for bed covers that the nuns insisted we use. Uh, but it was all together an America that was so different and freewheeling and youthful and that kept me wanting more and kept me wanting to come here. Margot gave away my line when I was going to say people don't believe me when I say that it was really love story that brought me to America. At the Odeon Cinema in Delhi as a 19-year-old who dreamed of changing the world through really political theater, I watched Ali McGraw and Ryan O'Neill flirt on Harvard's Ivy-laden campus, and I thought, that place looks like they could afford to give me a full scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, <laughs> and it is uh, extraordinary that they did, and Yale did lose my application, and Wellesley only gave me 50%, so I came to Harvard. <laughs> I came to Harvard with uh, dreams of making political theater, but alas, those were the days before our wonderful honoree, the great Bob Brustein, who is my neighbor at the table tonight. I couldn't believe it. It was the days before he worked there. So all I got was Oklahoma on main stage, um, and hoop skirts and musicals didn't quite cut it for me. Uh, instead, I moved over to uh, La Mama and Ellen Stewart, and I hung out with Liz Suedos and Andre Serban and terrific disciples of Peter Brook. But when I went back to college, I had to study something, and I studied documentary film. Of course, it was 20 years later that Oklahoma came back to haunt me. My son was cast as Curly in his school in Manhattan. 
and I would have to bloody wake up singing, singing, oh, what a beautiful morning, and um, it was uh, American theater. But um, at, at Harvard, I learned from uh, Ricky Leacock and D.A. Pennybaker, the great documentary filmmakers who gave me the confidence to believe that a life as a working artist was possible. And one of the main reasons I'm standing here today, I think, is that my first films, nay, the very first dollar of support I ever received to make my films were grants from the National Endowment for the Arts and from the National Endowment for the Humanities. From those days, uh, really, I, I just have to thank you. Thank you so much. And from those days onwards, I have learned the importance of cultivating stamina as an artist, simply to keep going, to hone our great craft, and to honor the handmaid. There is a saying in India, dhobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka, which literally means the washerman's dog, neither of the home nor of the street, but in my case, at home everywhere. I found, I found that people who inhabit different worlds can see through each of them. It is such people who have a sense of modesty, who know that there are other ways of seeing, who develop genuine appreciation for, rather than mere charitable tolerance for, other ways of life. I grew up with the guru-shishya tradition, which is the spiritual relationship in India in which a guru passes his or her knowledge onto a disciple. And it was this that led me to create Maisha. Maisha was the name that I was going to give my daughter until uh, a son popped out. And uh, it is a Swahili word. My son is here, Zoran, tonight. I'm very happy to say that. And, um, um, <laughs> and uh, Maisha is a Swahili word uh, that means the zest for life. And now it is the name of a filmmaker's lab that is based in Kampala, Uganda, and we are now in our seventh year of operation. We train screenwriters, we train directors and cinematographers and sound mixers to promote and create a local film culture. And the mantra that divines, defines our work in Maisha is, if we don't tell our own stories, no one else will. And our program pairs experienced mentors with East African students throughout the filmmaking process from story to finished film. And it is really this country, America's generous culture of philanthropy, that allows us to train filmmakers who are lacking resources but never lacking originality or motivation. In the creative world, borders by necessity need to be fluid and porous. Yet, now more than ever, it is time for us to tell stories in which people can see themselves. Not just some people, but all people. And not just in some places, but everywhere. It takes courage to be original, especially for those who have been told for the past few centuries that the West is the mirror in which they should see their future. But there is not just one truth the truth, unless someone wants to make a divine claim. There are so many truths, and it depends really on who's doing the looking and from where. And therefore, we really must celebrate and we really must nurture our wonderful artists. So many of us, so many of them are here today. We must learn from Bob Brustein. Without him, we wouldn't have the Yale Repertory Theater, one of the most recognized regional theaters in the country, bringing talented students and seasoned professionals together. We wouldn't have the American Repertory Theater. Too bad it wasn't there when I was there, but one of the top theaters in the country, known for celebrating innovating uh, dramatic voices like Robert Wilson, like David Mamet, and Philip Glass. And without Harper Lee, we wouldn't have one of American literature's greatest achievements, a novel that changed the direction of the conversation of race in America. And without Jacob Spillow, dancers like Martha Graham and Alvin Ailey and Mark Morris wouldn't have had the support that they needed to soar to great artistic heights and bring America to the forefront of modern dance and innovation. And without Sonny Rollins, I wouldn't have my knees so weak tonight. I've got to meet Sonny Rollins. Please, someone take me to him. The, the sound of jazz would not have evolved the way he has made it. He changed the way so many jazz musicians approach improvisation, especially on the saxophone. 
And of course, without Meryl Streep, whom I have the great uh, privilege of knowing, the world would not know how deep an actress can get under the skin of a character without ego, without vanity, with pure craft, in such a sense that you forget the craft. Her transformative ability has forever set the bar higher than any actress working today in America and beyond. And without Joyce Carol Oates, please someone take me to her too, uh, American literature would be lacking such a significant, such a moving, boundary-breaking feminist contribution, and hundreds of literary students that come from her, and I, I know many, Jonathan Safran Foer, Mohsin Hamid, the, the, his novel is the one I'm just about to start shooting in a film, The Reluctant Fundamentalist, and Joyce Carol Oates was his teacher, and she was a visionary teacher. And without Arnold Rumpersad, the world would be lacking the seminal biography of Langston Hughes, and we would not know the sweat and the blood and the struggle of, the bio of Ralph Allison, and he wrote that first biography. All of the individuals here tonight are true luminaries. Their visionary quality has defined America around the globe for many decades. Th these individuals have, with their work, brought us truth, truth and beauty with great feeling, personal and political stories about how they see the world. We need them more than ever in a world which markets beauty as commerce and increasingly finds truth unpalatable. As this world changes before our eyes, it becomes increasingly necessary to join beauty with truth so we may give expressive freedom to those who call for a change in the world. Not simply in Egypt and Libya and Wisconsin, but also in the little mosque and cultural center a little down from ground zero and in so many places where the gunfire is American so that a child on the street in Kabul can associate the USA like I did with a novel, a story, a poem, instead of a violent siege. We need to bring this country back to being defined by artistry instead of war. We can affect the world in far greater, in deeper and more positive ways than a missile. If we put even a tiny percentage of our military budget back into prioritizing the arts, it would be a step in the right direction. <clears throat> that is it. That is it. It is the only revenge is to make art that destabilizes the dull competence of most of what is produced, that infuses life with idiosyncrasy, with whimsy, with brutality, to use one's art to hold a mirror to a society that is bent on creating walls instead of peace. Remember, there is not a single human imagination, but multiple imaginations. Imaginative people are seen amongst us as crazy, but not everyone marches on the same road and not everyone is cast in the same image. There should be no borders within art, rather every artist should own all conventions. My nickname growing up was Pugly, which means mad girl. And when I was growing up, there's little anyone can learn from a mad girl, but there is no doubt that this mad girl has learned genuinely a lot from you, the award winners tonight, a lot from you, including how to nourish her madness into beauty. I salute you deeply and truthfully on this heroic day of achievement. I salute you for your years of learning, for serving your imagination purely, for your stories, your paintings, your sculpture, and your scholarship. We celebrate your names as beacons of clarity and madness in a very complicated world. And I hope you remain true to your twin goddesses, to beauty and to truth, as long as there's fire in your heart. Thank you so much. Thank you.